what is up you guys welcome back to my channel if you are new hello welcome my name is Mackenzie and today I'm going to be filming a how to start a successful vlog in 2021 I am so excited about today's video if you know me you know that YouTube is actually not my predominant platform my blog style by Mackenzie.com is I launched it on January 1st 2016 five years ago um, and it is my pride and joy my absolute baby it has definitely taken new forms over the years and I have have grown up alongside of it but I talk mainly about fashion college lifestyle and just everything in between and I absolutely love it I blog Monday Wednesdays Fridays and Sundays over on that and I always leave it linked down below and one of my most requested topics to talk about is how to start a successful blog one that is going to either a show you what career path you should be on which mine totally did for me a few years ago um, or B make money start generating an income to really turn that hobby side side hustle into your main gig and today I'm going to be talking all about it we're gonna share everything from creating a website choosing a name to really starting to generate that income I hope you guys are excited if you're new hit the subscribe button and I will have a blog post linked down below that's actually from May that has a lot of these things written out I did one of these in May of 2020 and I thought I knew success then and then you know, May 2020 through now, January 2021 really blew me out of the water. And I realized, wow, my platform could explode even more. I ended up with half a million views in 2020, which was so special for me and such an accomplishment that I just am really excited to sit down and chat with you guys today. So hope you guys enjoy. Buckle up. It's going to be a long one. And yeah, let's get right on it. First and foremost, you need to find your niche. And with this also kind of comes that what do I want to get out of this question? And you have to evaluate both of those things at the same time. So when I started my blog five years ago, my goal was to figure out what I wanted to do in college. I wanted to figure out what to major in. I wasn't really sure if I should go into journalism, photography, teaching, fashion, and I really just wanted to kind of talk about everything all in one place and figure out where my true calling, what my real passion was. I am a fashion merchandising major at Kent State University. If you guys didn't know, I am currently a sophomore there. And so it definitely worked out for me. Now my goal, my like end goal path, whatever I'm on has shifted a little bit. And now my goal is to inspire others, educate them on what to expect when they join, you know, the college atmosphere and to share affordable styles that are trendy, but you know, don't break the bank with my fellow readers. And so my avenue has kind of shifted a little bit. But when I started, I was mainly talking about fashion, makeup. I talked a lot about my faith as well. And as I've grown up, so have my platforms. I've kind of shifted what I talk about. I am mainly fashion and college lifestyle focused right now. And you know, once I graduate college, guess what? My niche is going to change a little bit as well. I'll start talking about post grad and what it's like moving into an apartment, maybe financing budgeting but when you are starting a website you kind of need to niche down and figure out what the heck do I even want to talk about if you are going more of the hobby route and you really just want a place to write talk about whatever the heck you want never stop talking about what you want but do know that you will have better luck growing your platforms if you kind of focus on two to three main categories number two is you're gonna have to come up with a name and for a lot of people this is the hardest thing to do but once you have it you know you can only go up from there a lot of people do just stick with their first and last name nowadays but I am styled by McKenz on here I'm just Mackenzie Morgan but my website is styled by McKenz.com my Instagram is styled by McKenz my TikTok is styled by McKenz I pretty much go by that everywhere else and that not only is going to be your website name but it should be your username on everything else as well it's really really important to pick a name that is available everywhere um, it just makes marketing a little bit easier for yourself and honestly for other companies to find you for your viewers to find you but once you come up with that name just know like you know it's kind of all uphill from there I think I chose mine probably two months before I actually launched my website and once you have a name it kind of makes the design process and all the graphics a little bit easier Next up is the trickiest part, but once you have it down, you are all set and it is actually creating the website. So creating a website is actually not as hard as it seems. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of patience, 
but once it's done you should be good to go for a little bit I do some maintenance related things about once a month but I actually don't change the design or the template of my website really ever I would say every year to year and a half I will go in and change like make big changes but for the most part once you've got it down you're all good and this is actually where I want to talk about Skillshare I've talked about them before on my YouTube channel and today's video is sponsored by them as well so a big thank you to them Skillshare is an online learning platform that has hundreds of different classes in all kinds of areas so whether you're wanting to learn about photography web development productivity you name it and they probably have a class a course that you can take at your own pace at your own time available I've done plenty of their courses in the past one of my favorites is the productivity 101 I'll leave it linked down below but right now they also have so many classes that talk about how to design your own website how to get a website up and running and I really really think that they are a useful source to check out if you are wanting to make that leap of faith and launch your website in 2021 I wish I had known about Skillshare when I was launching my website five years ago because gosh it would have made my life so much easier I actually found a class called understanding web development a beginner's guide to the web by Christopher Dodd and he does such an awesome job about walking you through the different steps and all the things there are to know about starting a blog he talks about what goes on on the front end and the back end he talks about JavaScript a little bit about SEO how to get your name out there and how to actually do the coding and the process of setting up your website it is so helpful I will leave that video linked down below in case you are in the market to watch something like that and are kind of in the process of starting your own website and I will also leave a link down below the the first 1,000 people that click the link will get a free trial of Skillshare. You can watch that video, you can watch the productivity one, and you can sharpen up your skills on any other aspect. They have so many great things, like I said, to really expand your skills that you're not necessarily taught in an average classroom setting. All right, now you've got the motivation to start a website, you've got a name, you've got a niche, you know what you wanna talk about. How do you actually start the website? Now you're going to go down one of two avenues. I have gone down both myself. There's no right or wrong answer, but I'm going to give you my experience with both. So the first thing that you can do is you can create a free website through a site like WordPress, through Blogger, Wix, Squarespace, any of those, or you can go self-hosted and you can purchase a domain and pay a monthly subscription to a hosting site to own your website name. I have done both of these things. When I started off my blog, I was stylebymckens.wordpress.com and I went through the first avenue and I went through WordPress just because they seemed like the easiest to use. Every blogger that I had read post about how to start a blog suggested WordPress and I heard that they were really user friendly, so I went with them. I blogged on stylebymckens.wordpress.com for about 16 months, and then eventually I ran out of space on that site. They only give you so much space to upload photos and videos and content, and then you have to start paying. So after those initial 16 months, I decided I was really serious about blogging. I loved it, I wanted to continue it. I wanted to turn my hobby into more than that. And so I decided to go down the second avenue, and I went to a hosting site, and I bought stylebymckens.com. So my website is hosted through Bluehost. They are really awesome. It's very affordable to host your website through Bluehost. I believe it's only like three or four dollars a month, and you purchase that website, and now great. You are given the name, and you have to design a website. From there, you are going to find a template and start actually putting together your website. You can buy templates. I've bought in my templates in the past from Pipdig. Um, you can also code the whole website if you are really into technology and know how to do all that kind of stuff. There are plenty of different things and plenty of tutorials out there. I'm sure you could also find one on Skillshare that could help you out with that. But from there, your site will be created. You can add all the different fonts. You'll add the menus, the sidebars, you'll you know pick the colors for your brand implement your Instagram all that kind of stuff and your website will be born and you can go either of those avenues like I said I personally recommend going the free way first just to decide is this going to be a phase is it something you're really going to take seriously because although um, hosting a website is not the most expensive thing in the world it definitely is an investment and it's something that you want to really put some thought into before just like clicking purchase you know buying a website is it just 
oh for funsies now that you've actually launched your website it's so 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 important to advertise everywhere Pinterest is going to be your best friend you can create some free graphics and implement those into your blog post so that people can pin them to their Pinterest boards and then you should also be pinning those graphics to your own Pinterest every time you post a blog post I always recommend Photoshop or Canva if you're looking for a free option to kind of create those like cute little graphics I'm not very like savvy in that area and so Canva makes it really easy I usually just go that way just because it's easier it's a little more time effective for me and so you can just add a picture write 10 ways to upgrade your blog in 2021 and then you know pin that to the Pinterest board and when someone's scrolling they'll click on that and it will open up into that blog post Pinterest is probably the most effective way to generate views towards your blog but of course you should be advertising on Instagram as well and telling your followers hey I'm linking this entire outfit in today's blog post you can advertise through TikTok that's another awesome way that worked really well for me all summer long and it's how I got a lot of you guys to check out my swimsuit posts and my college like essentials all that kind of stuff was over on my blog and so I was able to push people over to that platform as well but you really just want to get your name out there you know every blog post that you post you should be sharing somewhere else it's called cross-platform integration get used to it and utilize it off okay now your website's live and now you actually need to start posting on it and when I started I kind of was all over the place with what I was talking about however I always uploaded consistently I always had a posting schedule it is so important to have one I upload Monday Wednesday Friday and Sundays to my blog I have had that schedule for a very long time now I want to say a year and a half two years when I was in high school there would be some months where I would cut down to Tuesday Thursday Sunday or maybe only upload um, two times a week it just depended on like what season of life I was going through when I was cheering baseball season things were a little more chaotic for me and so sometimes I had to go down to a few posts but pretty consistently for the last year and a half two years I have been at four times a week and my followers know when to expect content from me and that's really really professional it's something that you really want to get in the habit of doing especially if you want to turn your blog from a hobby into a business so that is really really important especially if you want people to take you seriously you want to come off as professional not only is it important to your audience but brands really look for people that are uploading often and they're posting high quality content often which kind of leads me into my next point which is quality over quantity while yes it is so great to upload four times a week if you are physically like not capable of uploading that often that's totally okay especially if you're uploading four blog posts a week that you're not really proud of cut down to two or three a week then you know if that's all you can produce with high quality photos and writing that you really spent your time on that you're really proud of then so be it you know it comes with time and it obviously does take practice to work yourself up to more uploads a week and it also just depends on what else you are doing with your life I am a full-time student and this is what's worked for me however there are definitely times where in the summer I have you know I'm not a student in the summer and I am able to upload every single day and then in the month of July I will blog every single day because it's back to school season and I have more to talk about and share with you guys of course with time consistency hard work dedication you will hopefully start landing brand deals and that is how you start making money through your website there are a few different ways that you can make money through your blog and there are a few different ways I do I'm gonna kind of talk about it and I will do a whole separate video on revenue streams if you guys are interested just give this video a thumbs up and let me know down below but you can go a few different routes and there are ways that other blogs make money that I choose not to and so we're gonna touch on that first so a lot of people will place ads on their website they do this through Google Adsense there are ads on the YouTube video that you are watching right now YouTube places some of them and then I go in and place some of them manually usually you watch for five seconds you click through and then I would make a portion of that sale a lot of websites also have ads on them and those those websites are choosing 
choosing to place ads on their site. So when you're scrolling and you know that top that you looked at, that was kind of too much money four nights ago, shows up on the sidebar and is like, buy me. That website is allowing ads to be placed on their site. I personally do not keep ads on my blog just because I don't like the look of it. I personally hate when I see an ad on someone else's, so I choose not to keep them on my site as of right now. If you do, no shame in you, and Google Ads is a really great way to start generating money because when people click on it, or even when they're just like scrolling through, you will generate part of that sale. So that's a really easy way to start collecting money from your site. The second way that some blogs make money that I also do not use is through free printables or workshops. They offer some sort of service. This is actually something that I kind of want to dabble into in 2021, but as of right now, I haven't done it and um, you know, it just the time has never been right for me. But a lot of fitness and cooking blogs do this, especially where you will be on their site, you'll be browsing, and it will be like, download me for $5.99 and you'll get my free recipe kit, or you'll get my free workout guide, or you can download these printables and you'll have this entire class, or you can sign up for their $50 class and learn how to start a blog. A lot of bloggers do that, where you like kind of get that one on one experience. So that is a big money maker for a lot of bloggers. So like I said, I don't make money either of those ways, but I still do make money through my blog. And the number one way that I generate income through my website is through affiliate links. I use like to know it slash reward style. If you guys follow any bloggers over on Instagram, I'm sure you've heard of the like to know it app. They are really easy to use. And basically bloggers can link their outfits through that app and post them to Instagram. And if you have the app, then you can go in and find links to everything you see me talking about sharing, wearing, whatever but I also use those links on my website so in pretty much any blog post you read of mine I will have links to everything you see me wearing if it's a college essentials video I will hopefully have linked the comforter and the mattress topper and the vacuum and the Ikea moving bags and everything that you heard me talk about in that video will likely have a link and when you click on that link it will you know, pull up that bag, pull up that comforter in a new tab. It will take you to Bed Bath & Beyond's website, whatever it may be. If you place an order on that website, I make a portion of that sale. It's not a very large portion, but it does add up. You know, the more people that click and the more people that place orders, obviously those few dollars can add up. So that is my like main revenue stream is through linking stuff. I also have a shop tab on my blog. And if you click on the shop tab, you can see tons and tons of different clothing items that I have in my closet all linked in one place it's kind of like shopping on a store but just all of the clothes that I own and I make a lot of a good commission through that as well so that's my number one revenue stream you can also make money through sponsored posts and I don't take sponsored posts too often on my blog um, mostly honestly because a lot of advertising dollars are put into Instagram TikTok, and YouTube not as much in websites however every now and then I will take a sponsored post where a company is like we're gonna pay you X amount of dollars to talk about us in your blog post maybe share some of our clothing and that's that so I take those every now and then it's essentially the same kind of collaboration as me working with cup she on a bikini haul here on my youtube channel basically the same kind of idea of a sponsored post there are different variations of sponsored posts obviously some cost more than others so those are the main ways that you can make money through your blog but also remember guys that money does not come overnight. It takes patience and it takes persistence. It also takes an audience that is trusting of you and that is engaged. And that's where you really need to focus on building that engagement and that community aspect within your readers. So once you get that community aspect, you know, people are like, oh my God, like I'm so invested in where she's gonna go to college or what she's gonna do after graduation. Cause I feel like she's my friend. Like I read her posts and I feel, I feel feel like I've known her my whole life. I really care about her next stage in life. That's when you kind of have that community aspect where you were like, oh my God, you know, you know how some influencers you catch yourself telling your parents about, like they come up in conversation and you're acting like they're your best friend for five years and you realize I've never even met this girl. That is so important. That is the golden ticket right there. Once you have become that person for someone else, that is when your audience, you know, trusts you. They care about what you're going to do in that next stage of life. And they're going to support you through all of that. It's really, really important to engage with other people, to like and comment 
comment and share and read other people's websites, like their Instagram photos, all that kind of stuff, all of that, um, you know, advertising that I was talking about earlier, that cross-platform integration, all of it comes into play because it's how you build a readership that is going to follow you through every stage of life. And that, my friends, is how to create a successful blog in 2021. It is so important to treat your hobby like your main hustle if that is the direction you want it to go into. If you want other people to take you seriously, you you have to start taking yourself seriously. Do you hear me? It is so important. And if you have the drive and the determination and you stay dedicated, I promise you with time, it will happen. And all of a sudden you'll be sitting down filming a video about how to start a successful blog and your little 14 year old self will be sitting on your shoulder in the shadows and will be like, gosh, like I, I dreamed of being that girl and you can do it. I promise you guys just stick with it. And I hope you guys found today's video helpful. If you want to see other videos that are similar to this, be sure to give this one a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below. I'm thinking about doing one about a YouTube channel as well, just because starting YouTube is a little different so let me know if you guys would be interested in that and i will give it a go love you hope you enjoyed and i will talk to you in my next one bye guys